Hello everyone, my name is Mia and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about interrailing and just kind of giving some tips for anyone who is thinking of going interrailing. So enjoy! Almost two years ago, so it was summer 2017, me and one of my friends Cahill decided to go interrailing um, and I don't know where I was going. Yeah, we just decided to go, is that all I wanted to say? I don't know. I'm just gonna go into the tips. <laughs> I don't know what I was gonna say. I think I know where I was going with the story. We decided to plan out our trip. So we sat down together and we're kind of like, okay, I wanna see these cities. I, and he was like, I wanna see these. And so we kind of worked out um, a route that suited both of us and got places we both want to go into. Um, and then we booked our flight, we went, we started in Rome, so we booked a flight to Rome and we were ending in Paris, so we booked a flight, no we weren't, <laughs> we didn't even go to Paris, we were ending in Amsterdam, so we booked a flight home from Amsterdam. So that was the kind of two things we first did, was book the flights, um, and then we decided to, not all in the one night because it is kind of expensive, to, if we're going to do it in one go, but we then booked all our hostels kind of over the next couple of weeks um, and this is something I really preferred doing. I am a planner and I am an organiser and I'm like okay we've got to have, we've got to know what's going on the whole time kind of thing. Some people do kind of just pick their start and end destinations and then they just wing it and that is actually my worst nightmare because I don't know just if you get to a city and there's not enough places in a hostel to stay or something like I don't know fair enough that that is some kind of people that's just how they are they're just very like very spontaneous and stuff but I I would say I'm spontaneous but I'm, I'm cautiously spontaneous and I have my spontaneous moments planned <laughs> that totally contradicts itself but from a personal experience I way preferred knowing where we were going and knowing we had a bed to stay in in every place we we're going so that would be my advice it is to plan your trip but if you don't want to that's okay too you know you do you the second and most important thing so if you when you're booking you get this interrail pass i think there is an option to get a little like holder thing I can't remember does it automatically come with that or do you have to like select it but I would recommend selecting that because the pass itself is just paper um so just kind of keep it intact and stuff I'd get one of these little holders um but on it it says when it's valid from okay so when you get your pass in the post or whatever for the love of god double check that it's valid for the days you want it to be valid for. So I got mine, I got mine two or three months before we were actually going off and checked it, everything was fine, I was like, unreal. We got to Rome, Rome was just an all around trauma time for me, I like nearly fainted and it was just, oh, it was just not nice, but we went to the train station, that was fine, and went to go by booking our tickets, got them, that was grand, and then you go, and you like fill in, you have to fill in the day you're traveling, where you're traveling from, to, by train, etc. Because they just come around and they just stamp it then. And it, so we got back to our hostel in Rome, by the way, it wasn't a hostel, it was like some guy's apartment and it was just really weird. But anyway, um, I'll get back into that. But we went back and I was, as I was about to fill out my thing, whatever way, I just looked at the valid dates, I was like, oh my god i had booked it for a month later and like they are so so strict on your tickets okay they are so so strict um and i literally just started crying and i was like oh my god what am i gonna do so i got on to like and it was such a busy time of year so like i was trying to get on to so many people and um people kind of the internet people were getting back being like can you just book another one will refund you the other one kind of thing so what i had to do was book another pass but it wasn't like timing wise it was only going to come in vienna which was like halfway through our trip so i had to pay for trains the whole way to vienna and it just cost so much to be fair i did get back the money for the original pass 
um, and that did come fairly quickly I think but oh my god it was just such an ordeal and so much unnecessary stress like so just read the valid dates and make sure it is the ones you booked it for oh because it's just so stressful if you screw it up um, and you, it also just costs you more money um, cause you have to book all the trains and oh it was just such an ordeal so make sure your pass is the right, right dates okay so kind of in line with train tickets um, I would say to when you get to your city is kind of within that first day there book your tickets for the train to go to the next city do you get what I mean so like when you get to the city go to the train station and book it for the next thing because then you don't have to worry about it while you're in your current city um, sometimes trains are booked out and you might get one that would suit your time and stuff so my recommendation would be once you get to the city just book it straight away for the next city um, and then that's done and you can just relax and enjoy your time when you're booking your ticket make sure you get a ticket and not just a reservation so I don't know what it is it isn't like this in Ireland I don't think I don't really know I don't get the train enough to know but there was one time we were oh, we were trying to get from Rome to Zagreb and it was just a again big ordeal um, but your one had only given me a reservation on one of the trains we had to get a couple of different trains to actually get to the ground but I think it was on one of the last ones she only gave me a reservation and so I gave it to your man and he was like yeah where's your ticket and I was kind of like that's my ticket and he's like no this is a reservation where's your ticket and I was like I don't know like that's just what she gave me and then this other guy came along and I was like I was just given this I thought it was just a ticket so some places you have to reserve and book a ticket I think or or else just just make sure you're booking a ticket and not a reservation because you'll have to pay extra anyway on the train because technically you don't have a ticket there or something I don't know but just when you're getting it make sure it's a ticket and not just a reservation Okay, so in terms of luggage, um, me and Cahal both brought different bags and I think kind of the most common one is to bring that big old rucksack thing that's like half your body. Um, I never wanted to bring this. I don't have great shoulders so I was like this is just gonna wreck my shoulders so much. Um, so I actually brought a wheelie suitcase and I remember telling people and they were like oh my god that is gonna be such a trek. They were like dragging around the place but I personally loved it because with a suitcase you know you can more or less see everything whereas I feel like with that big old rucksack some stuff is down the bottom and then you're just taking everything out to get to the bottom and it just <laughs> hurts your back I would feel um, so personally I loved using just a little carry-on suitcase I thought it worked perfectly for me I didn't think it was a nuisance to be lugging it around the whole time but again personal preference you know if you'd rather bring a big old rucksack do but for my, from my experience, I way prefer having my little wee suitcase. Okay, so in terms of hostels, I'm gonna assume that most people stay in hostels when they go interrailing. Like most people we met in our hostels were interrailing. When you're going to book hostels, I, as I said, I would advise to book them in advance just in case there's no space when you turn up. Um, but oh my God, always read the reviews. Always, okay? <laughs> always because as I kind of briefly mentioned with Rome it was the first place we booked and I don't know did we just not read the reviews or were there no reviews if there's no reviews don't go there don't go with it the place we went to in Rome was nothing like the pictures as I said it was literally like this guy's apartment and um, it was me and three other guys literally in a room and the beds were like one two three four one was like a half kind of old dude who was like half naked all the time and I was just like uh um, but that was honestly the only bad experience we had with hostels and I don't know to be just not read the reviews or what but I do remember re reading reviews for all of the others and they were all fine. So yes, I would really, really, really recommend reading the reviews on the hostel before you book it because they're so, so important, okay? <laughs> just read them. If you want to do the trip relatively cheaply you can do it very very cheaply just saying it totally depends on your own budget um but you can do it really cheaply and if you are gonna try to do it quite cheaply 
make sure the hostels have kitchens because I mean in Europe most things are actually really really cheap like the food and stuff um, and even there's breakfast sometime in the hostel and you can take some of them for lunch and stuff um, but make sure it has a kitchen because we stayed in one in Berlin um, that I think we just assumed would have a kitchen but it didn't it had a restaurant instead and it just wasn't ideal because I think we'd actually bought food beforehand. We were like, sure, we can just make this in the kitchen. But then we arrived there and there was no kitchen. Um, it was fine. We, we dealt with it. But if you are going to try do it on a smaller budget, make sure there's a kitchen so that you can cook your own fo food there the whole time. Because it's just, it can be a bit more expensive, you know, to eat out of, as is everywhere. So, yeah, make sure there's a kitchen if you want take advantage of the free walking tours most hostels will either have someone like who's working in the hostel that gives them or knows where to go to get free walking tours because honestly they are so so good um it's normally from locals you know so they know the place really well and they're always able to answer any questions you have but it also just gives you like a good view of the city and just a brief kind of history on it and stuff um, we, we did a, do one in Vienna and oh my god it was the longest walk ever and it was so historical and by the end we were just like oh my god just get me home like definitely do take advantage of them they're free they do ask for donations at the end you cannot you can just kind of slip away before the end of it when you know it's gonna come to end if you don't want to they don't get offended but it is their job they are kind of looking for tips so up to you if you thought it was good give them a small tip if you're being a cheapskate and just scoot off before it ends and yeah but definitely if they're offering free walking tours in your hostels or just anywhere nearby I would definitely take advantage of them the last little tip I'm just gonna say is get to know people in your hostel because a lot of people are doing it by themselves um, and you just meet really interesting people from all different backgrounds and Sometimes you make friends with them and you end up doing things together. Um, so yeah, I would definitely, when you get there, just see who's in your room, just chat away, just start getting to know each other. And I mean, you might be like, okay, you know, we're not gonna really talk much anymore, but you might meet some really interesting people and also have just friends to do stuff. It's fair, fair that city. So they're just all my kind of tips and stuff. I know that before I went into railing, I was literally looking up so many videos on just like, different people's experiences so I just wanted to let you know some tips that I found helpful and sometimes that I kind of came up with myself and um, I would definitely recommend going into railing if you're thinking about it it's this summer next summer five years time summer definitely definitely go you could even go on like a little mini kind of into railing for like seven days do three cities kind of thing and um, oh before I don't think I hadn't written this down I would recommend doing a longer time with less cities. We did 10 cities in 21 days and it was a lot. It was a lot, it was really good, but it was a lot. So think about, you know, maybe doing less cities and spending more time in each city kind of thing. Sometimes it was just a bit hectic and you're just like, Ugh. but overall it was an unforgettable experience um, and I would really, really recommend everyone to go on it because to go, yeah, to go into really on it going to it. I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> but yes um interrailing was amazing and I would really really recommend anyone doing it oh yeah that is everything I think if you do have any more questions about interrailing or you just want to know anything um feel free to leave a question down below or message me on snapchat or instagram or twitter or something and I can tell you anything that I can try to tell you <laughs> So that is everything anyway for this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I will see you when I next see you.